Welcome, Tanner Tip Tuesday. Boy, what an important topic today. I'm gonna to give you this one component, physical component, that you need to have as part of your cane training and your cane skills. You gotta have it in your toolbox. Even if you think, even if you are, for that matter, a stud muffin with this tool, this is the one thing that you absolutely need to have. But before we do that, a warm welcome from sunny Miami, Florida to those new to the channel. Before we both forget, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content and avail yourself. Are you new to the culture? Are you new to the cane? Even if you're experienced, you're an instructor and you want to learn how to serve your audience best, go ahead and take advantage of the free resource that is the Cane Clarity Call text CCC to 305-745-78 the staff will schedule you in less than 24 hours. We'll get on a call, personalize, give you a blueprint so that you know what to do first, second, and third, and you actually have a plan um, to be your very best with this cane. That's at no cost to you. So, by the way, congratulations to those of you that all our new um, graduates from the Winter Cane Immersion, we just had the four-day uh, uh, live training here at the headquarters. I'm wearing the graduate shirt in honor of you guys. That was, you guys were fantastic. So a big cane bump to you. The next one is gonna be happening in September and we will announce the dates this week. So listen, <clears throat> regardless of how good you are with this cane and the self-defense um, component, there's this one thing that you need to have. And it's coming right off of what you told us after this immersion. One of the most uh, eye-opening aspects of the training was just how extensive the empty hand skill set for American Cane self-defense is. And I told you, <laughs> it is one of the most thorough and complete uh, that you can dive into. And why do I say that? Guys, because I've told you from day one, an over-reliance on any tool, it's, it's, just, not, it's just not good uh, a tactical strategy, right? So if you always, yeah, it's the primary tool. We love it, we love the reach, we love the fact it's already drawn, we love all these advantages. Still gotta have an empty hand skill set. And from day one, ACSD has been giving you empty hand translation. So show you, you know, again, we're, right out here, you know, from the outside, but uh, then something like this happens, and, and now, guys, insisting on coming in here, you know, where he can uh, see this coming, you're gonna need something else, because he's not gonna let you move in here for free. Even if you're trying to go up the midline, there he goes again, why? Well, because he's a young guy who won't have, is intent on doing damage. Oh yeah, he's not a zombie, he's got reflexes too. So, you're going to need this, this cover hand, this other hand. What, what are we gonna do with it, right? And, and so there, there it is. You gotta know how to go in here and how not to go in here because he just bends that elbow and not go here. So we, we take this for granted a lot of times, right? We go to resort first and look at him already. Ready? You're gonna need something first, something that sneaks in there, right? Go ahead and pin, pin if you'd like, because the only good thing about a grab or a choke or anything like this, right? The only good thing about this is that I know where the hands are, but now you're gonna go to what's gonna give you the biggest bang for your efforts here. That's what the, the targeting that is closest to the brain. Go to the eye, go to the nose, go to the throat. Yes, I'm telling you, right? The, ah, right, he does this, oh, both hands come in. Now that opens it up so that you can either further incapacitate if you need to do that or get away. Notice that at no time, ah, bang, bang, bang over the head. No, 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 no. So we're going in here. Great, boom, now you can go ahead and sneak in. Now you can go ahead and take out the shin, right? Now you can go ahead and take out the shin, follow it up with a shot to the clavicle, and get out of here. Because the idea is to incapacitate so that you can get to a safe place. The second component that you want to be able to um, integrate, make it a part of your training, is to be ambidextrous with the tool. With the tool and with the empty hand. So number one, gotta have an empty hand skill set for times that you don't have uh, the cane, but you want to be ambidextrous on both sides. So, again, I'm, I'm moving uh, to what I, today. What I'm demonstrating things away from that the, the the power shot mode. So I'm not going into power shot mode in here. No need to go crazy. Boom! I, I I struck first. He's striking over here. Oh, I caught it. Oh, lock him up. Sight right. Boom! Over the head. Create your distance. These kinds of things. You should be able to 
whatever you do, you also have to be able to do that right to your right and right and left and left and right because you don't have the luxury of telling the bad guy, do me a favor, I haven't trained on my non-dominant side. Well, cleaners can't afford to have a non-dominant side. I recommend the same thing if you're carrying a firearm, any other tool you want to be. Cane training is brain training because whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And the last component, by the way, that goes for empty hand. Before we go anywhere, hold on. So I don't have the cane now. You still have to have an empty hand component, right? Keep those shot in here, boom, I should be able to do anything. Right, to whatever I do to one side, I have to be able to do that cane and empty hand. <clears throat> the last component that you want to have is you want to have the ability, see how I'm gonna look at the cane, to increase your neuromuscular coordination and kinesthetic sense with the tool. And this is sorely missing in just about every curriculum unless you specifically train for that. And ACSD, again, pioneered a lot of that. And what it has to do with is doing at drills, right? The, the drills that allow you to increase your kinesthetic sense because just the way that they threw that cane at me, boom, and I was able to catch it here and go. I don't have to be looking at how I picked up the tool. And I'm gonna give you one, just one little component. The, the first thing that's gonna happen, for those of you, if you're new to this, and you go to train and you see a cane self-defense application, I'm gonna tell you right now, the most overlooked physical component of cane training is choking up on cane. So if you're training like this, if you take that camera, because oh, we're gonna need to move, uh, um, move that camera, if you're hanging around here, going from this, which is a standard grip, to here, you wanna practice that. You wanna practice being able to go from here to here in a reverse grip, doing the same thing. See that that I did, it's so overlooked because you're going to go ahead and do an application and he throws a roundhouse punch and I came over here and I anchored and now you're gonna find most of the time there's not enough cane there. Look at the wrist, how it's bent. That's not the best way to do that. You're right in front of him, he takes the cane. The other thing you're gonna have, on the other hand, it's too much cane. So you come over here, not good, because the more cane, uh, then the more there is to retain, right? And you don't want to do that. So you want to get that just right. That's called kinesthetic sense. I don't have to look at it and say, hold on a second. There it is. No, 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 no. He moves in, bang, I'm all ready. I got it right where I need to have it. Not enough, it's going right to the throat. I'm gonna take him down here, gently. You're gonna follow me on the way down because I want to show you how this comes into play. This movement that I just did so that now I can go ahead and strike the knee, strike the lateral malleolus, strike the elbow. Notice that all I'm targeting is bone imp impact. Uh, it's an impact tool, so I'm targeting bone to incapacitate. That application that I did, if you don't have the capability to go from that to this moment, you see you can't stop at this moment and remove and go with both hands and put, I don't have to look at it because this is how we train, right? That's already built in, we've done it so many times. And if I didn't have the opportunity to do that, then I'd go with my reverse grip. See, reverse grip, I can strike and be just as effective, thank you. So guys, those are three things. The main one and the biggest eye opener here and what everybody had been talking about, some by the way, and just read the reviews and listen to the videos because Caners, thank you so much. Those of you that uh, were here and you got in front of the camera and you gave your, basically your perspective of attending here, the commonality was, wow, it was so complete. It was so thorough because it had the cane and then it had the empty hand translations. But make sure also to add the ambidextrous training of whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, and then adding the coordination, neuromuscular coordination and kinesthetic sense. So question is always the same. Where do I learn that? How do I, there has to be a structure, a step by step, right? You can't learn it properly just from looking. This is potential. This is opening your eyes. Take the first step. Text the letter CCC 305-745-7839. We'll get a conversation going, start you the right way so it saves you a ton of time, funds, and frustration. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Keep painting. Stay safe.